Welcome to this edition of MMA FanCast. I'm Luke, and I am joined by reigning CFFC middleweight champion, Aaron Jeffrey. Aaron, welcome. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me again. Congratulations on your fight. You were the headline of CFFC 93 Friday, so only about five days ago. Uh, a big congratulations to you for uh, beating Colin Huckbody, who was the defending champ. You came in from Canada. You had told me right before the fight that you know your your skill at coming into an area where you're not the hometown guy because you don't fight in Canada much. How did everything go for you? It went very well, man. Um, yeah, the, the fight went... Uh pretty good i mean it, it might not have been the most exciting fight for the fans but uh i won all four rounds i think i dominated the fight so um i'm happy yes absolutely you did dominate the fight the the unanimous decision was 40 to 36 now typically if you were winning all rounds 10 9 that would have been 40 to 37 so you got a 10 8 round do you have an idea of what round that would have been um no, I don't know. I, I think all the rounds were probably fairly similar. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's hard to say. Okay, gotcha. Fair enough. Um, it, it's pretty great. Now, I also want to want to talk to you and say, I, I don't think people may disagree on this, but at least on this show, you never have to apologize, apologize for not getting a finish. I think uh, Chael Sonnen, okay, take that as it is, but Chael Sonnen once famously said, the goal in fighting is to win. I understand that there's an expectation to do it. You've won three fights up to this all by KO, knockout, TKO. So it's not that you don't have that. You finished Andre Petrosky, um, who had been on the show previously. He was undefeated, never been stopped. Obviously, you stopped him. So your finishing ability is there. Um, but I do think Jail brought up a good point, which is dominating somebody for a unanimous decision is in some ways more challenging than getting a quick knockout where you catch a guy. Talk to that a little bit. What, what, what work level did you have to put in to be able to dominate somebody over the entirety of a fight versus catching a knee and getting them, you know, getting them stunned as great as that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with that hundred percent. Like I fought, I fought a full 20 minutes against this guy. And I think I, I won all 20 minutes of it, right? I think I won 20 out of the 20 minutes uh, of the fight. Um, so, yeah, obviously that's that's harder to do than than getting the knockout in, in the first three minutes or something, right? I had to fight uh, all the rounds ago right till the end. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it shows, I think it shows the cardio more. It shows the conditioning. Um, and I, I think uh, the skill set can, can shine through a little bit more when you're in there for that long. Absolutely. And I believe it did. I mean, you are... Um, now the middleweight champion of CFFC, which is known for creating uh, UFC fighters, including their previous CFC, uh, their most recent middleweight champ is now in the UFC, um, as is mm -hmm. his brother at heavyweight. Um, but you, you were also, your most recent fight before this was the headline of LFA. And even though I know that wasn't a title fight against Andre, those are two back-to-back -back wins against what I would say as far as the um, promotions go, they are two big feeders for the UFC, for sure. LFA and CFFC, both are on UFC Fight Pass. So talk about your viewpoint on yourself, your confidence. I know you had once fought two years ago now on the Contender Series, and, and, that, was a, and that was a submission loss. So kind of analyze yourself as far as UFC level. Yeah, I, th I think I'm there, man. I mean, I say it all the time. There's been uh, a bunch of uh, interviews, news articles, some big MMA media outlets writing these posts about me saying I'm on the doorstep. It's only going to take one more win. And they've been saying that for the past three fights for the past year and a half. So, um, yeah, I, I think I'm ready, man. I think that should be my next step. Well, and I think it's great that you have that attitude. Of course, I agree with you. I think there comes a point. Um, you may know the name Pat Sabatini. Um, mm -hmm. I, okay. Um, I, I know him good dude, but, um, he's kind of been in that up and down for a while where it was at 145. Um, I think you should have been the UFC years ago, but you know, it's one of those things where CFFC kept giving him, um, good fights. He kept winning. He had kind of a, 
uh, a bad injury loss that was kind of weird. And then he bounced mm-hmm. back from it, defended, you know. But um, mm-hmm. he just finally got a UFC fight, but it was supposed to be last minute. And then the guy didn't weigh in or something. And then that fight didn't happen. So um, I think it does happen where incredible talent, you included, Pat, best wishes to Pat in April when he fights for the UFC. But um, what's the mindset? I know that you live with your coach, you're training all the time, knowing that for whatever reason, the UFC is more likely to call a CFFC champ up on short notice than to give them a full, that's what they did with Pat. They've done this with a lot of fighters that are right at that level. So what's your expectation as far as it likely being a short notice versus being a full fight camp? Yeah, I think that's probably the case. Um, I've heard some things. Apparently, the roster's full. They can't really sign any more guys out right now. So oh. chances are it is a, a short-notice fight. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of bittersweet, I guess. Like, it, it's cool knowing that that could be me any day now. Uh, it's also a little bit nerve-wracking to know it could be any day now, and I might not have a full camp. So, uh, yeah, it's it's good and bad. Yeah, absolutely. I think it does put uh, the people who are right there should be uh, UFC level. You are obviously uh, there. I mean, you could be fighting right now in the UFC, and I think uh, who you fought with his record and you, you, that could have been a UFC fight. It basically was. It was on UFC fight pass, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm looking at you now. It's only been five days from the fight, and not only are you always handsome, but you look really good. I mean, I, I, but you look really good as far as which, which is not always the case. Once you win, obviously winning is important, but sometimes mm-hmm. when people win, they, they've picked up. It doesn't look like you've picked up a lot of damage. Um, wait. Oh, you did. A little bit of a shiner. A little bit of a little shiner. A little bit of a shiner. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of one of my friends, Joe Stripling, just won um, a Muay Thai heavyweight fight for lion fight congratulations to him but he had to get a bunch of stitches from an elbow like yeah. this you know a crescent yeah. stitch and i think yeah, maybe 12 stitches something like that but at least he didn't come away I with anything, anything like that yeah. i uh he actually nicked me a little bit with the very first jab of the fight and i was bleeding a bit they didn't stitch it though he, uh, the guy just put some medical glue just, on it it's not really that bad but uh, yeah, the very first punch of the fight just kind of skimmed off my eye and, and busted me open a little bit. Well, talking about that a little bit more, given the fact that I try on this show to get some behind the scenes stuff that most fans won't hear. Um, how does that register? You know, first first punch, you've got blood above the eye, which is a bad spot because depending on how it droops or what it does, how was that registering yeah. for you? Um. Well, I've been cut in my face so many times. I think I have soft skin and I must have like sharp eyebrow bones. Last year, I was stitched six times. Every other month, I had stitches in my face. Uh, So yeah, he threw that punch and then we clinched up and I saw the blood dripping. And my first thoughts were like, oh my God, not again. Like, holy shit, this happens like every single training camp and the first fight of the punch or the first punch of the fight. I'm already bleeding. Like, can't believe it. Yeah, that's that's a very real response. It actually may be worse to have that happen in training camp, like the week of. We've seen guys sometimes come in with with stuff that was clearly stitched or glued or whatever. Yeah. Because yeah. so in a way, it's better to have it in the fight than in training camp, anyhow. Um, yep. But when you got to your first corner, how relieved were you to get that? I'm always interested in in how a fighter responds to the corner feedback. What did they say to you and how relieved were you to kind of, hopefully you got the all clear from them um, that you were, that you were okay. You know, uh, on the cut, you mean? Yeah. Just the cut. Yeah. 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 I, I think, uh, I don't know if it was right after the first round. I think you can hear it on, on the video. Actually, I ask, uh, am I cut? And they say, yeah. And then the cut man comes in and, he's, and he says, oh, yeah, it's not that bad. And he puts, um, I think they put like adrenaline on it to stop the bleeding. But, uh, that stuff was dripping into my eye in the fight and that burns. So my eye was like on fire for the whole fight, which sucked. Oh, wow. We're continuing on. What's interesting is I've served as a cut man in the corner. And when you're not the pro cut man, like that, like CFFC has, when you're only there for one mm-hmm. fighter, the only thing they allow you to have, you know, cause sometimes they go through it, the commission and you're only allowed water, mm-hmm. ice and Vaseline. And, mm-hmm. um, Obviously, I think it's great that the cut man had something a little bit more 
uh, powerful, but it almost led to a yeah. disadvantage. Um, would you have preferred just the Vaseline? Because I've had some success with just get it dry, which is the yeah. trickiest part, and then get the Vaseline yeah. on there. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, that stuff really sucked in my eye, but maybe, maybe it prevented the bleeding more, and maybe if we didn't have that, there would have been blood dripping in my eye, so it's hard to say. Yeah, very respectful of you there. Obviously, the corner man did his best, and, and hats off to him. It's a, it, it's kind of a, a very stressful 30 seconds over there. And you're right. Who For knows? Sure. You're winning the fight. You would have hated to get it stopped because of blood in your eyes. So um, that's a big part. I think one aspect – we'll get on to something else, but I think one aspect of fighting that sports fans that don't know fighting don't understand is there's no injury timeouts. You know, there's no way to say, yeah. hey – uh, I broke my finger. I, I need to take a break or whatever it is. Um, but getting back to it, yep. you you have a well-rounded approach. You have good grappling. You have obviously some devastating striking. You come from Canada. Last time we talked about GSP, the, the greatest MMA fighter to ever come from Canada. Well, besides you, of course, you have a future that you can create that. Yep. You can create that narrative um, down the road where people be like, who's the best? Uh, fighter to come from Canada is it GSP or Aaron Jeffrey I mean maybe that'll happen in the future but when it, comes, when it comes to getting wrestling experience in Canada how do you do it because Canada is not necessarily known for a ton of high level wrestlers and I'm just curious how you've gotten to this point in your career well, I, I wrestle with the university that's uh, right near me in St. Catharines is Brock University and they're, uh, they have the best wrestling team in Canada um, they have like a lot of Olympic champs. They have a few, or not Olympic champs, sorry, national champions. They have uh, a couple of people that have went to the Olympics. The head coach there, Marty Calder, I think he's a two-time Olympian. Um, my my head coach, Chris Prickett, is uh, an Olympic caliber wrestler. I wrestle with uh, a lot of these guys all the time. Like one of my one of my good friends and uh, main partners, Clayton Pye. Um, he just, uh, he just had a wrestle off recently for Olympic trials. He also was just in Italy wrestling there in a wow. tournament. So yeah, man, I have, uh, I have a lot of solid partners and coaches. Well, hats off to all of those names. And I certainly did not mean disrespect to Canada. I'm happy that they're producing the level of wrestlers they are. That's probably just an assumption being an American that, that, you know, American style wrestling is, is bigger, but I'm, I'm thrilled that Canada is doing as well as it is. And I know your training partners um, are getting better by training with you who currently is maybe just starting out their pro career that you think from your gym is somebody to watch in the future um one of my other good buddies zach powell uh he's not exactly just starting out his pro career he's he's four and oh now um but he's a young kid uh he's very talented and i think he's got a bright future ahead of him that's always great. And when, when we talk about when we talk about camps and when we talk about MMA being unique in the sense that it's an individual sport, but you've got to have a team around you. Um, what do you what do you think a lot of people miss when they just watch you or watch any fighter in the in the cage that they won't understand unless they're involved in a camp? I think it's probably the lifestyle, man, because I see guys come into the gym that think they want to be fighters and and they see what it takes um and it's it's not glamorous so i don't think many people can do this um like i train six days a week twice a day all of those days i do nothing but eat sleep and train like i sleep nine or ten hours a night i have a nap during the day in between my training sessions all i'm doing is having a nap or eating food and preparing for the next one so uh um yeah like i said it's not glamorous it's not super exciting and it's it's a lot of hard work Absolutely. And I would say that that's, that that is probably most professional athletes. One of my friends in college, his dad was an eight year NFL player, an NFL linebacker. And when I talked to him about it, he said, well, all he knows is you got to sleep a lot when you're at that level because you're sleeping nine, 10 hours a night, sure. 10 hours a day, your diet. Um, what's the most, this is fun. What's the most fighter esque breakfast you've ever had? Meaning, breakfast that most people aren't going to eat but you do because you, you need the nutrition yeah i eat the same thing for breakfast every single day and i've had it every single day for probably the last like five or six years i have 
three eggs with like a pound of vegetables cooked into them. Uh, and then after I have a, a bowl of oatmeal with like banana and peanut butter. Okay. And that's it. Single day. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, it, it's just interesting. So no fruity pebbles, no frosted flakes, no, none of, none of those uh, delicious. No, uh, no, no, pop no that's never, never for but, uh, maybe late at night on a cheat day or something. I might have uh, a couple of bowls of cereal. Well, you know, you brought up the word nutrition. It's not so much that you couldn't eat some cereal or some I love honey nut, honey, uh, honey nut Cheerios, but the reality is honey nut Cheerios, no offense to honey nut Cheerios, but it, it won't fuel you like that meal that you have fuels you. I think that's a big part of it. So going forward, we talked about your UFC ready, your UFC caliber. You've kind of got that. When could they call? Um, given the fact that the UFC is moving towards live crowds in Florida here in a couple of weeks, where do you think that puts um, sort of MMA again in post COVID, hopefully post COVID? Like, how do you see that? Um, it's a good sign. That's for sure. Um, I think a lot of the States are starting to open up, right. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think, uh, mm -hmm. what is there like maybe 12 or 15 States that have removed the mask mandates now? Yeah. Uh, a lot of places are running at full capacity. So I, I think that's a pretty good sign for, for MMA, for sure. I mean, pro sports in general, right? I, I'm sure a lot of the, the bigger leagues are going to probably start doing some some games in these places and having an audience again. So um, good for good for MMA, good for pro sports, and probably just good for the world in general. Get the economy going back back up again. Like get these small businesses running, people back to work. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's time. It is. It's super exciting. I think Florida is going to be doing, I live in Pennsylvania and the governor just announced today, we're pretty slow. We are not off a mask mandate. And he announced that April 4th, we'll be allowed to go to 25% capacity indoors for restaurants and, get, and games, stuff like that. So Pennsylvania is still a little bit behind where some of the other things are, which is kind of, which is kind of nice for you. When you fight in the UFC, as far as a fan goes, not in your corner, who's the most important person that you want as a fan, not in your corner for your first UFC fight, if it if it can happen? Uh-oh, we got cut off there. Can you hear me? Sorry, we good now? I, I think we're good on my end, yeah. I was just asking, oh, you froze up again. We'll see. We'll see if we can work. Okay. Yeah. Fan-wise, who's important for you to have in the in in your fan group live when you go to the UFC? Um I mean, anyone and everyone, man, like it, it's it's so important to uh, to have the support. Uh, obviously my, my girlfriend is super important. Like she supports me through my fight camp, uh, so much. She's, she's the one who, who takes the heat when I'm, uh, cutting weight and grumpy and shit. She's the one <laughs> that takes the heat. Um, my mother has been a huge support to me too throughout my whole career. So, uh, yeah, th those two women are both very important in my life. Well, that just sounds wonderful. And hopefully with the restrictions being lifted, whenever you get your UFC debut, hopefully they'll both be able to be there and that'll be, and that'll be a great thing. So um, what, basically my last question, given the fact that this is five days removed from your title fight is what is, what do you think is the most meaningful part of you getting the CFFC belt uh, for you? Here it is a couple days later. Um, the most meaningful part. That's uh, that's a good question. Um, to me, I'm gonna say it was getting through this fight camp because it was a fucking challenge, man. This was the most stressful fight camp and the most stressful fight trip that I've ever been a part of. Um, uh, like all all the COVID stuff, like trying to shut our gym down, us having to run practices under the radar, bylaw officers coming in, having to get multiple COVID tests before leaving having to get multiple COVID tests before coming back. Um, like we had to drive back to the border in a rental car and we left it there. And we had to walk across the border to not get stuck in these quarantine hotels that we have in Canada. Um, I had multiple injuries during this fight camp. I had two bouts of shingles. Uh, I lost my wallet three days before the fight. I lost my visa card. I lost my health card. I lost my social insurance card. 
Um, so it was like so much stress, like one thing after the next for two months. So I'm, I'm happy to come away with the, the victory and the gold belt. And now it can finally seem like it was worth it. Absolutely. And you must have a big relief, a sense of relief with all those things going wrong, both physically and as much as losing a wallet is annoying that that could have potentially stopped it because there always has to be identification and all those things when you're fighting. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm glad all that yeah. worked out for you and you've earned it. You, you might get to enjoy this a little bit with all the hard work. So congratulations to you and your team for all the hard work. I hope to have you on uh, when we're talking about the UFC. Thank you so much. Yeah, I hope so. Absolutely. Well, take care. Congratulations, champ. Have a good one. Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. All righty.